Hey, this is Kristen with Collision Hub. We get a lot of questions on the website about application, whether it's with your waterborne or your solvent product, and what kind of problems are coming up with air systems or just even with the guns these days. So we thought we'd take an opportunity to come up to Minnesota and visit with Dan Am, who's the exclusive distributor in the U.S. and Puerto Rico for SADA equipment. Now, it's what I spray with when I'm in the booth, and I know that I don't take care of my equipment the best I should. So, Tony, what are some of the things that are changing these days with care of the gun? Okay, uh, people are still cleaning guns for the most part the way they were 10 years ago. And they maybe learned it from someone that taught them that had been doing it that way for 10 years before that. Uh, equipment has changed, the paints have changed, the chemicals we use have changed. So for us, that's been a big part of our training has been the gun cleaning uh, and the differences today. Yeah, well, that's a good point because I think, I don't, I don't know when the last time I changed my cleaning <laughs> habits were. So let's, let's do the stop start uh, method. What are some things that we need to stop doing right now as technicians with our guns? Okay, a couple things probably the most important thing that we see is people still trying to, they're soaking their spray guns. Uh, soaking them, either whether it's in parts, uh, taking the air cap off, throwing it in the cup on top of the gun at night with leftover solvent. Uh, there's no need to do that. It causes more harm than good. Um, if you clean your gun at the end of the day, you rinse your air cap off and you blow it dry, put the cap back on dry. Um, you have seals inside of this that can swell if they're left in solvent. And the chemicals we're using today are certainly, uh, with some of these new compliant solvents, uh, are more aggressive than some of the thinners maybe in the past. Right. Uh, also, the gun bodies themselves, uh, you don't you don't want to submerge and keep that dirty solvent that may be laying in those in that thinner container that you put it in, lying laying inside of those air passages. Um, so people have to do a better job of not only not soaking the gun, but just rinsing them, cleaning them, blowing them dry, uh, and also when they're blowing their equipment dry, making sure that they're turning that air micrometer knob on the back while they're blowing air through it. It forces air in and out of those passages, and it helps get all that get it all contaminated out. solvent out much right. better. If they're doing that, uh, the guns are going to last them a lot longer. So what's another tip of something maybe that we need to start doing that probably maybe is it a piece of equipment that's not on our bench right now for taking care of our guns or is there just a process we need to be doing? Well, I think uh, it all starts with a process, but having some of the right tools uh, with each one of our spray guns when the gun comes out, you get a tool kit that comes with it and inside of that tool kit you get these dual-ended brushes or this black brush that's a general purpose brush for cleaning into hard to reach areas, cleaning the inside of your air caps, the outside of the fluid tips, that won't damage anything on the spray gun. Um, you also, uh, we have these little white dual-ended brushes that uh, for cleaning the inside of the passages in an air cap and they're not going to damage the brush. So we have these smaller paint needles and these small paint needles can be used, they're a thin flat flexible blade and they can be placed inside of the holes inside of the air cap and turned. And, and it helps to remove debris or cut the paint out of those passages without, um, without changing the shape of the brass. Uh, but they're different than some that you find out there. There's some other kits that have just a, a straight needle. With these being thin, flat, flexible blades, they cut that material out without being abrasive. And they're, not, they're smaller than the holes. Mm -hmm. And we find many people are taking other objects and shoving those into the holes in their air cap. And pretty soon those air cap holes that we spent a long time designing are the wrong shape or they're mismatched and they don't spray well. Yeah. Um, torch tip cleaners definitely need to be removed from the paint bench. Um, they're abrasive and they harm things. Um, but the basic tools that come with that spray gun for cleaning uh, should should be what are used. And, and certainly we have um, gun cleaning kits um, that have the right tools in it. Right, now let's talk about uh, just a quick overview on the maintenance and why it's so important. So when, when I change the airflow through the gun and I'm changing a lot of things, I'm changing pattern. I'm changing pressure, I'm changing material that's going through there, and that's causing painters some problems with application. So I, mean, do, I think a lot of times I get a lot of questions with painters saying I'm having a blending issue or an overlap issue, and it really comes down to a, let's look at your gun issue. <laughs> yeah. Well, that can be because as you get, as paint builds up inside of a spray gun and all of the air passage that are inside of this, uh, inside those air passages, as they start to reduce in size, it changes the speed of the air going through it. And when those air passages get smaller, and get more debris in and the air is going through uh, at a faster speed, the velocity changes and it blows past that fluid tip more quickly mm -hmm. and the air cap doesn't have time to atomize it. Well on top of that if it's changed the shape it creates turbulence and when we get turbulence in that air it can cause blotching or a fan that's going to flutter. Um, when we get damage in behind the fluid tip because they're using the wrong tools to clean it, it doesn't seat up well with the air distribution ring in behind that fluid tip. And as that happens, then we start getting leakage of air and fluid back and forth in between the passages, 
and all of that causes a disturbance which can maybe a fluttering fan it may be blotching it could be fan shape issues mm -hmm. all of that stuff is directly related to gun maintenance oh, that's perfect so sometimes when you're having some issues in the paint booth the, the solution is not just reaching down and cranking up the pressure a little bit so you'll want to take a look at your your preventative maintenance and your care and how you're taking care of that and that's going to save you time in the booth it's going to save you resprays it's also going to end up saving you a lot on paint materials because you're not going to be going through so much of it up front so we're going to have a little bit more detailed you guys are going to have some some stuff on the website it's going to go a little bit more into detail on the whole way to clean and care for a gun. So we're really excited about that. I know I'm going to learn a few things. So stay tuned to the website. We'll have some more information where you can go and watch a detailed class on the care and maintenance of your equipment and your air systems and everything to make sure that you're getting the best out of your spray equipment and the best paint job possible out of your booth. Thanks.